This video is sponsored by Squarespace. A question that I see come up often about astrophotography is, what do you do with it? <laughs> and there isn't a single answer, of course. Many people are gonna share their images online or on social media. Some people like to share their images to an email list or maybe even in person at an astronomy club meeting. But something interesting I found is that very few of us regularly print out our astro photos for display on a wall or even framed. And just to back this up, here's the results from an informal poll that I did. As you can see, the majority, about 70%, say they never print their astro photos. And why is this? Well, I can think of three big reasons. Number one is that our culture is just increasingly online. I'm talking to you right now through YouTube and my Nebula Photos Patreon community is and mostly an online community. I think online communities are especially common for more obscure hobbies. And even though, you know, astrophotography is getting more and more popular, I'd still say it's a pretty niche hobby. So it makes sense to me that most of our activity, and that also means sharing the images, also happens online and not as much in person. So that could be a reason we don't print as much. And number two is very similar. It's just that as we've moved from film to digital cameras, photo printing in general has become less and less common. It used to be that if you shot a roll of film, you'd have it developed and at the same time have prints made usually. And then typically you'd put those prints into a photo album and that's how you would share your photos with friends and family. Nowadays, very few people do that. They share their photos through text messaging and Facebook and stuff like that. And then number three is that printing astrophotography is, in my opinion, more difficult than regular photography. Uh, the reason for this, I talked about in my previous video on printing, it has something to do with a term called the contrast ratio. And it, just in real layman's terms, the issue is that there are a lot of subtle details in the dark parts of the image in an astrophoto, and those get easily lost when you print with ink on paper, which is the most common type of printing. Uh, these shadow details, as we call them, show up much better on a screen, whether it's your phone or a laptop or a computer monitor. And that's why in my previous video on printing, I was so gung-ho on backlit frames and printing on transparent film. Um, and I still think that's a great way to go, but uh, the cost and the complexity is a definite concern, especially if you're trying to print out lots of your work, like I have recently been for an upcoming gallery show that I'm doing. So in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on how to get the most out of your prints when printing on normal photo paper. Uh, but before I jump into tips, um, I've so far you know, only explained why I think we don't print our astrophotography, but uh, why am I saying you really should print your astro photos? That's sort of the premise of the video. The biggest reason actually is I think it can be a whole new aspect of the hobby that can be a lot of fun. Uh, I think many of us like the challenges inherent in astrophotography and printing, especially home printing, is a whole new set of challenges that can be fun to work through. Another reason is I think printing out our best work really adds a sense of accomplishment. Like, yes, this photo was good enough to print and hang on my wall or uh, give it to as a gift to a family member or friend or try to sell as a piece of art. And I think that there, you know, in terms of selling, there's a lot of negativity around trying to sell our astrophotography within our community. What I mean by that is I see a lot of people saying that, you know, no one's interested in buying astrophotography. And, you know, it may be true that it's harder to sell astrophotos than some other kinds of photography. But the truth is all art, all photography as art is hard to sell. It's not going to be easy. So if you really want to sell your work, there's more to it than just being really good at astrophotography and printing it out. Um, there's a whole question of how do you get enough attention to actually find the audience for your work. And we typically call this marketing your work. And it's a whole skill unto itself. It could be a whole other video. Uh, but I guess this is a good time to mention, I have a gallery show on right now and the opening reception for it is on Thursday, September 12th from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Landau Gallery at the Belmont Hill School in Belmont, Massachusetts. So you're welcome to stop by if you live in that area and I'd be, I'll be there, you know, of course, at the opening reception and I'd be happy to chat. No 
sort of pressure to buy one of my works, but if you're interested, you can purchase one of my framed photographs at this reception. Uh, they're all very reasonably priced, and I'm happy to sign them uh, if you'd like that. So that was an example of marketing. <laughs> and having a YouTube channel or other social media channel uh, with a large audience of interested people that's your audience is a good way to market your work. But another good way would be to display your work at a high traffic area, like an art fair or a coffee shop. And the reason both of those can work well is just that a lot of people go to both coffee shops and art fairs. So it's a numbers game. You know, more eyes on your work, better chance that someone is gonna to wanna to buy it. And with art fairs in particular, you can assume that many people are going because they're actually receptive to buying art. So it can really work out depending on, you know, the particular fair you're talking about and how skilled you are at selling in person. I don't think that's one of my strengths. I'm better on video than in person, but there's all kinds of ways to go about this. Again, that's not what this video is about. I just wanted to sort of make the case for, yes, you can sell astrophotography, but um, I think a lot of people think if they just print it out and put it for sale, it will sell. That's not true. You need to think about marketing and all this other stuff. Okay, so let's now actually get into the nitty gritty of printing astrophotography. I'm gonna be talking about home printing because I have a home photo printer. Um, but some of these tips could carry over to commercial printing, meaning sending your work out to a photo lab that does the printing for you. In terms of the economics of home printing versus sending your work out to a professional lab, you'll probably be better off not home printing. <laughs> um, it really only pays off if you print a lot of your work. So if you're really getting into this, I think home printing can be worth it, but most for most people, you're probably gonna be better off just sending out your work to a, a lab to get printed. But I will say, if you do wanna get into home printing, wait for a good promotion before buying the printer. I got this one, the Canon Pixma Pro 100, which might now be discontinued for under $100 with some nice Canon uh, photo paper included because Canon was running a really good promotion where I got uh, $250 back as a rebate. And I've heard from others that they still run these kinds of promotions, these rebates. Uh, this was a number of years ago. Um, and the reason they do this, uh, that, you know, why would they give away a nice photo printer for $50 to $100? is that they charge insane prices for the ink cartridges, <laughs> the refills. So they're fine with basically giving away the printers every so often, even if it, because they make that money back on the ink refills. Um, in terms of my favorite papers, this is from Canson. It, it's in their Canson Infinity line, and it's the Baraita Photographique. I hope I said that right, Baraita Photographique. And uh, another one I really like is this one. This is Canon's paper, and it's their Photo Paper Pro Luster. Okay, and then my software of choice for printing is Adobe Photoshop. And I can't really give advice about any other software for printing because this is the only one that I've ever used for printing. Even before I was doing astrophotography, I was dabbling into printing, so I've been doing it a number of years. And uh, I'm gonna give you sort of there's a lot that can be said, but I'm gonna give you some of my sort of more uh, basic foolproof tips that will work no matter your situation. So first thing we're gonna do is open up Photoshop. Uh, whatever version you're using is fine. Uh, you're gonna make a new document and you can just go over here to the print presets. And if you have a paper size that's represented here, uh, you can just click on it and uh, and then click create. In my case, uh, A3 plus 13 by 19 inches is not uh, one of the presets here in Photoshop. So I'm just going to enter the measurements manually, 13 inches for the width and 19 inches for the height. We can leave the resolution at 300 pixels per inch. That's a sort of a standard print resolution. I usually put this on 16-bit. It probably doesn't really matter for printing if you could put it on 8-bit if you want, but I'm gonna leave it on 16-bit. For the color profile for now, just leave this on sRGB. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about profiles once we open up the document. Okay, 
and background contents you want on white. All right, go ahead and click create. Okay, so now we basically have a, a document that represents our paper that we're going to print on. And uh, for this one, we're not gonna jump right into printing out a full picture yet. Uh, what we wanna do is use this piece of paper and we're gonna feed it through the printer a couple times to work out the colors and work out the contrast and work out everything else. This is called test prints. And uh, the way I do it is I actually use the paper that I'm going to use for the final print so I can get a good idea of how the, prof the uh, paper profile and the printer profile and all these different things are working. But um, to save on paper, not to, so I don't waste paper, what I do is I just print out small versions of my print and then just um, sort of move it over so that I can print on the paper multiple times. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and go file, place, embedded, and bring up one of our images that we wanna print out. Okay, and what it'll do is it'll take your image and um, fill the, the page with it. That's not what we wanna print though. We wanna print a much smaller version something like that. So I just took a corner and made it smaller and then I'm gonna hit the enter key to accept that. And a lot of times um, to save even more space on the page, I'll crop this in a little bit. Um, so instead of printing out the full image like this, I might, let's just try something like this. You see that we have most of the the highlight the you know the the brightest highlights, but also the darkest shadows within that selection. So I'm just going to then click on create a layer mask to just crop that down, and then that just saves us a little paper space. Okay, so if you were um, just testing this, you you could just go ahead and print this out and um, for your first test print. If you're printing multiple um, different images in one sort of session, what you can do is keep adding more images. So I can go back to File, Place Embedded. Okay, so for every image that you're wanting to print out, you'll just make a little uh, sample here on the page. Now let's zoom in on these. We haven't we haven't done anything to them yet. These are my final sort of just processed images, how I would like them looking on the screen. But that's gonna of course be different than how they're going to print out uh, because screens work differently than printouts, uh, especially on paper. Right now, we're viewing this in just a normal RGB uh, mode, but Photoshop has something called proof colors. Um, so proof colors is uh, for sort of visualizing what it will look like more printed. Um, it, it doesn't work perfectly, but it, it does give you a better idea. So to set this up, we're gonna go to our proof setup. And if you're just using a very basic uh, printer, you could use the working CMYK mode. Um, but since I'm using you know a photo printer where I can use profiles and special papers and all this stuff, we're gonna to go to proof setup custom. And uh, here where it says device to simulate, we can use these uh, special profiles that I've already downloaded. So uh, these come with the printer, the Canon Pro 100, and then it has all the different Canon papers here. Um, so, and then you'll notice that for each paper, like I'm using this uh, paper pro luster, there's three and then one slash two. Three is lower quality and one slash two is higher quality. So we're gonna use the higher quality profile. Uh, it just lays down more ink, I believe. Here in the custom proof condition, we're gonna use that profile. And um, let's use the uh, this simulate paper color as well, just to give us a little bit better idea. We're gonna use this black point compensation, all of this different all these different options. Okay, so um, 
Yes, as soon as you set up that proof setup, it automatically turns on proof colors, but it's a their keyboard shortcut for it is command Y. So just to show you the difference, here's without it on, and here's with it on. So you can see it sort of just made the screen a little bit darker. <laughs> uh, it, do, it didn't really change the colors that much. Um, now, what I've found is that uh, even if I calibrate my screen and do all these other kinds of things that they would suggest, you never really get <laughs> a great representation of what it's going to look like printed out on your screen. So just because they're different technologies, paper printing and backlit screens, they're different. So that's why we're doing a test print, and then I'll show you the whole method to get you to the final quality that you want if you're home printing like this. Okay, so uh, normally I'd probably add even more uh, images if I was printing a bunch out, but let's just stop right here for this example and go ahead and print this. Since we have all this room on the paper, we can always add more later. We can keep using this same piece of paper is what I mean. Okay. So now it's as simple as we go here to file print from the Photoshop file menu. Uh, it will have loaded in whatever you last used. So I was last printing on a four by six inch piece of paper. So we have to go here into print settings and change this um, to A3 plus art paper. And I'm just going to do uh, A3 plus 13 by 19 normal um, instead of borderless. I only use the borderless option when I'm printing, you know, four by sixes sometimes if I, if I really want to do that. But in general, using the borderless option um, will waste a lot of ink uh, because it's like having to go all the way to the, the edge and... Um, and then sort of it uses some excess ink and I think it sort of gunks up your machine too. So I, I try to avoid borderless whenever I can. So we're gonna do the A3 plus. We're gonna go down to quality and media. I'm gonna change this to photo paper pro luster and set the print quality to high and click save. Okay, and then down here under color management, we're gonna do Photoshop manages colors and we're gonna change the printer profile to Canon Pro 100 Photo Paper Pro Luster 1 slash 2. Again, you need to just make sure you get the profile for both your printer and your paper and load it in to your system and then it will be an option here. Might as well send 16-bit data. Again, I'm not sure if that really matters from what I've heard most, you know, you can't really get 16 bits of uh, color variation in printers. 8-bit uh, is, is really fine, but I'm just gonna do it, might as well. Uh, okay, and then black point common compensation, relative colometric, I'm gonna use all those defaults, and that's it, so. Uh, this gives us a little preview and then we're going to go ahead and click print okay while it's like this it's important to remember um, where the top uh, corner is uh, so when i load this back in i'm going to load these in uh, in the bottom right which is on my screen is the top left right so uh, just note that um, but then the next thing we're going to do so we're going to take a very close look at the actual printed images. So on camera here, they look actually fairly similar to what I'm seeing on screen, <laughs> but on to my eye, I can see a lot of uh, subtle differences. They're a little bit darker. They're a little less saturated. Um, the, the colors, there, there's certain colors that aren't as vibrant, like the reds really seem to be needing to be boosted here. Um, compared to what I see on screen. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we're gonna put this this printout right next to our monitor so we can be referring to it um, continually as we're editing. Okay, so I usually go one by one with this um, and 
you know, you may find that you can just apply the same correction to all of your images and that works. I find I'm, I like to sort of uh, have slightly different adjustments for each image. And I can't remember exactly uh, who I learned this technique from. Um, it, I remember that it was at the Photo Plus Expo at the Javits Center in New York City around 2015, I believe. And I'm guessing it was at like the booth of uh, one of the paper companies like Hanson or uh, I don't know, uh, maybe one of the others, um, or maybe it was a printer booth. I can't remember, honestly. Um, so I apologize to whoever I um, stole this technique from and I'm now showing on my YouTube channel, <laughs> but um, it's a very useful technique. Okay, so this is how it works. You look at your image on screen, then you look at your image that was printed out in your test print and you note the difference. And the main difference I'm seeing are that my test print is a little bit darker, a little less saturated, and the reds are very muted. Um, like it, it looks a lot more yellow than, and this one has this these sort of orangish reds in places. And so what I want to do here is apply some adjustments um, first to make it look how it looks on uh, my test print. I, I know that's sort of counterintuitive, but you first adjust your image on screen until it looks like your test print, right? Okay, so I'm going to desaturate it. I'm just going to do that by pulling up a hue slash saturation adjustment layer and desaturate it until it looks more like what I'm seeing on my print. And I'm mostly using the blues here to judge that a little bit more. And then I'm going to do a curves to darken it to how it looks on my print. It's actually not that much darker in the print, but um, maybe just a little bit like this. Okay, and then that main thing is I thought we were losing out on the red, so I'm gonna go into my red curve and bring that down. Hmm, but that's making it too green, so maybe that's not the right approach, so let me undo that. Let me try instead opening up a color balance adjustment and adding yellow and cyan. Yes, now we're getting to how it looks on the in the print. Not actually that much yellow, more like that and now that i'm seeing it like this i think i went a little bit overboard on the desaturation so i'm just going to go back to that hue saturation and back that off just a little bit okay great so now i have the my image on screen looking like how my print came out Okay, so I'm going to bundle up these three adjustments and group them, just Command G or Control G on Windows and call these print. Okay, and then I can turn that off. That's how I want it to look. And that's how more like how the print came out. And then I'm just gonna look at the print again and make sure I got that right. The only thing is now on screen, it's looking a little bit more green than the print came out. The print came out a little bit more yellow than this, and this is looking just a little bit green. So I'm gonna go into my curves, and I'm just gonna try the green curve, and I'm gonna to try to just make a very subtle adjustment to this green curve. Yes, there we go. So this is how the print came out. I now have it, and that's what I want it to look like. Okay, so now, <laughs> what do we do? Now we make a new set of adjustment layers um, to get it back looking to how it looked originally. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna just go back to my adjustment layers. I'm gonna pick the hue slash saturation. I'm gonna add saturation. 
I'm gonna go to color balance and I'm going to add uh, red and maybe a little magenta. And I'm gonna go to curves and I'm going to brighten it a little bit. Add a little bit more contrast. Okay, and then I'll group those and call these adjustments. Okay, and so what did we do? We went from the original image, we then made it look more how it came out in the test print, and then we added adjustments to get it back looking more like it looked originally. And I tend to go just a little bit past how it looked originally. I go a little bit more punchy with the contrast and things like that, um, but basically how it looked originally, but just a little bit more exaggerated. And then what you do is you turn off the print uh, layer, the print group. So now it's going to look really punchy, right? but these are actually now the correct adjustments, right? Because um, we got it looking like the print and now we got we put in the adjustments to make it look more like what we want, but then we remove these print adjustments when we actually go to print and that's the technique. Um, and that's gonna get you to more like this when it actually prints out. Okay, so turn off the print adjustments. And so the, to me on screen right now, this looks overboard, especially, let me turn off the proof colors. Okay, if I turn off proof colors even more so, that looks just like a little bit too much. But when we print this out, it's gonna look more like that because we've already now um, taken into account what, what a print does to an image. It, it, it will never have just sort of the same amount of uh, saturation and contrast as the screen, especially with astrophotography. So that's why we need to make these adjustments. I've so far only been looking at this image for this uh, technique, but what should happen is uh, if we now just move this crescent image down here and turn it on, we should find that this, these same adjustments work for this one. So here's the original image on screen. Now, if I turn on these print uh, layers, this should look what it looks like in print. Yeah, pretty close. And then if I turn on the adjustments, it should bring us back more to the original, but just a little bit more punchy. And then I'm gonna turn off the print. Now see, again, this looks really weird um, on screen, but these two, they, they just look way too saturated and contrasty on screen. But this, according to my uh, just like little method here, is what's gonna get us back to how I want them to look. Okay, but now to test this theory, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy everything and do a new test print. Okay, so I'm gonna take these two images right here. I'm going to select both layers and just move these over holding down the Alt key or Option key like this. And then I'm going to turn off the original layers because that's where we already have the test prints printed. Okay, and then here in my layer stack, I wanna make sure that the print uh, adjustment layers are turned off, just turn off the visibility, but that the adjustments are turned on. And now we're ready to print again. So we're just gonna put this piece of paper back into the printer in the correct orientation and do another test print. Okay, and then here is what happened. So um, on the left-hand side here are our first two test prints, and then here are our second two test prints. And this is an iterative process, right? So if you 
if you see something in your next set of test prints that you don't like, you can of course uh, try fixing it. And what I'm seeing is I really like how this one turned out. That's now looking basically exactly how I want. Um, this one, which we just applied the same adjustments to, I'm not liking quite as much. The Crescent Nebula, the star of the show here, is coming out really well. But in the shadows, there's a little bit too much magenta. I want it to be a little bit more blue than um, magenta. Um, so I'll keep tinkering with this one. This one's already done after just that first set of adjustments. So that's basically how this goes. You keep just using this big sheet to run your test prints and figure out what adjustments you need to make in Photoshop. And then when you're happy with all of the adjustments after the latest test print, then you can print it out full size. Okay, so how do we print out something full size? Well, the first thing is you're gonna to wanna to look at uh, how you're gonna be displaying the, the picture. So I'm gonna be using these mats that are uh, 16 by 20 mat size, frame size, but um, the actual cutout of the mat uh, where the image shows is 11 by 14. And it's actually not 11 by 14. If you actually measure it, it's uh, 10 and a half by 13 and a half. But that is very standard to just call that 11 by 14 because uh, it's it accounting for a quarter inch bleed so that you don't show any paper white. Um, so I'll explain that more here in a second. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and open up. I'm gonna do a new document again. And I'm gonna use the same settings, 13 by 19, 300 pixels per inch, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna turn on rulers, Command R or Control R, and I'm gonna set my rulers to inches. So then I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit, and I'm gonna click on this left-hand ruler, and I'm gonna drag one in to one inch. If it will let me, there we go, one inch on that side, and 12 inches on this side. This will give me my 11 width. And then for the top bottom ones, we have 19 inch high paper and we want it to go down to 14. So we're gonna take off two and a half inches off the top and bottom. So I'm gonna put my guides at 2.5 on the top and 16.5 on the bottom. So now we have these guides. Um, this area here in the center is the area we want to fill with the image because this area is 11 uh, by 14. Now, like I said, the actual print, the actual area that's gonna show through in the print is actually 13 and a half by uh, 10 and a half. Um, and the reason for that is that on each edge, we want a little, we want a little bit of the image to be um, over so that it can be covered by the mat so that you don't have the white paper showing at, on any edge. That's called the bleed area. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go place embedded again and pick our image here. There we go. And then I'm just gonna shrink it down to the size of this area right here. Just like that. Now, this one uh, was already sort of like the correct uh, format that I wanted, um, but sometimes you'll have to make decisions about, you know, uh, do I want to crop the image a particular way to fit the frame or I, I, do I want to go with a custom mat and frame uh, because I'm tied to a particular um, aspect ratio for the image so that that's all up to you I usually just go with sort of more standard sizes and crop my images uh, to sort of a standard uh, size 11 by 14 is very similar to 4 by 5 so uh, one thing that I often do is I'll, I'll use the four by five framing for Instagram um, because you know Instagram can do one you know can do square one one to one or it can do four by five is allowed as well for Instagram images. So I'm often sizing my images to four by five for Instagram and then they work really well for framing like this at 11 by 14 inches. Okay, so here is our image, but remember we're not just gonna print this as is, we're going to apply that adjustment stack that we made. So we go back here to our test print document and we're gonna grab this adjustment folder 
and drag it and drag it onto this image and then just drag it on top. And that's all we have to do uh, to get this uh, ready for print. So just make sure that you center it on the page, that it's the correct size for your mat for framing, and then apply the print adjustments that we created um, in our test printing, and now we can print. Okay, and that's done. Let me back it up here. So it looks good. As I mentioned before, I'm preparing a gallery show. So I'm printing out a bunch of my favorite photos that I've taken here. And I'm framing each one with a black frame and a black mat to give them a more professional look and also to make them easy to hang on a wall. And here is me installing my show in the Landau Gallery. It took me a while to decide where each piece should go for a nice flow that I thought made a lot of sense, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. In this video clip, the track lighting isn't on yet, so it'll look a lot better in person. And I hope to see some of you there. Again, the opening for the show is on Thursday, September 12th at 7 p.m. at the Landau Gallery, which is in the Arts Building at the Belmont Hill School in Belmont, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. And I got this uh, opportunity thanks to Daniel Duarte, who reached out to me through my contact form on my website at nicocarver.com. And for my website, I use the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. I talked a little bit in this video about marketing your astrophotography if you wanna sell it. And Squarespace is a great resource for that because they have all kinds of tools for marketing and selling your art online. But it's also uh, about just presenting your astrophotography in a professional way so you can get more opportunities. And it's all made super easy with Squarespace's design system called Squarespace Blueprint. And there are lots of ways you can customize the design quite easily to fit your needs. There are also lots of features and tools built in. For example, if you wanna sell prints online, you can set up an online store and Squarespace now has flexible payments, including Stripe, PayPal, Apple Pay, credit cards, Afterpay and Clearpay so that your customers can pay however works for them. They also have, of course have a spam free contact form that I uh, have found very useful. Really any kind of website that you wanna make, Squarespace has you covered. And if you head over to squarespace.com slash nebula photos, you can sign up for a free trial to check it out. And when ready to make a purchase of hosting or a domain, you can get 10% off with code nebula photos. Till next time, this has been Nico Carver, Clear Skies.